Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. If you're anything like me, something you were looking forward to in the Return of Rome DLC, in addition to the Romans being added, was to have them in a campaign, or even just a standalone single player mission. There was the Trajan campaign before launch, which, when I found out was for AW1, felt like 23 knives in the back. That's now four Roman campaigns in Age of Empires 1 and zero in Age of Empires 2 for those keeping score. Given that injustice, I've decided to personally answer the call and make an unofficial campaign mission for the new DLC, which is an overhauled single player or two player co op version of my scenario Romans vs. Barbarians. This is available in the AoE2 mod section and just search Romans vs. Barbarians single player. Now, I should point out you don't actually have to have the new DLC to play it, and you shouldn't run into any problems if you just play as the Byzantines. The map is based on an old 8 player online version I made where 6 players teamed up against the Romans, though at this point I think I created that 6 or 7 years ago, and it needed a major update with single player in mind, so I spent the last few days beefing it up. In this video, we're going to take a look at the scenario and talk about the new features. The first obvious change is to the map and the position of players. The timeline has moved forward from roughly 300 AD, where the Empire was still in good shape and reasonably strong, to now a little after 400 AD, when things have started falling off the rails. At this point, the Romans have abandoned Britain, which is now taken over by Anglo-Saxons, and you even have some cyan-colored settled Goths in Spain and western France to deal with, but haven't yet lost Carthage. I always thought of this as the last moment the West could have maybe been saved in some alternate history, and once Carthage was lost, the jig was up. In fact, to emphasize the importance of Carthage, I also greatly opened up the area around it to make it easier to farm, as it really was the breadbasket of the West. I also connected Carthage to Sicily with shallows, as previously if the barbarians destroyed Carthage, to get to Rome you had to go all the way around through Spain and then the Alps, and clearly no one in the right mind would take that route. Any reasonable person would just jump over to Sicily and invade Rome from the south, obviously. Now going back to those cyan colored Goths, they have a slightly different mechanic inspired by the historical situation. They're migrating and settling in your territory, and have a neutral diplomacy with you, which means they'll attack your military units, but they won't attack your villagers, and vice versa, with your army leaving their villagers alone. It's up to you if you want to break that agreement and make them your first target, though if you enemy them, kill one of their villagers, or attempt to break into their core territory in northwest Spain, then they'll enemy you back, and all bets are off. Alternately though, you might be best to tolerate them, temporarily. If you delay attacking them and haven't made them officially enemies yet, you can tribute them 500 gold, and they'll send you 8 world raiders as a mercenary force. Those world raiders can be used to help you attack other barbarians nearby, or defend in a pinch. But keep in mind, if you enemy with Cyan, those mercenaries will abandon you, basically so you can't just use them to turn on their own people. The idea is the settled Goths potentially provide some manpower to fill your ranks, as they did for the real Roman Empire, though on the flip side, the longer you leave them to build up, the more established they get, and ultimately, removing their town center is one of the victory requirements, so you have to turn on them eventually. Given the extra time and gold that you've sent them, that might be harder to do if you don't deal with them right away. Even on neutral stance, they'll still fight your military units and defensive buildings in the area, so they are a bit of a threat as long as they're around. And I've tried to make it an interesting choice of whether you want to rush them down as your first target or use them as an early army boost, mirroring the fact that at times there was a blurred line between Romans and Goths as either enemies or sometimes cooperating. Now as for the other side of the map, unlike the previous version, I thought the Sasanians were important to include as an enemy for the Eastern Roman Empire, so they're a new player in yellow and give at least a bit of a threat to the East and keep them distracted. The Sasanians and Eastern Romans actually got along fairly well for the most part during this period, though there were a few brief wars in 421 and 440. The first was settled quickly with a return to status quo, and the second one the Romans just paid them off because they were being invaded elsewhere by Vandals. Given the AI can play the Eastern Empire questionably at times, I didn't want to run the risk of the Sasanids conquering them and leaving you to fight the entire map by yourself, so the Sasanians are pretty defensive, and just a tiny corner of their empire is represented. So with the two new factions explained, what is the ultimate goal of the scenario? Well, first the Western Romans have four major landmarks, with three town centers and a wonder in their capital at Rome. Any of these can be rebuilt in the same location, but if all four of these important buildings are destroyed at any one time, you instantly lose the game, and the West has fallen. Previously online, this was a completely defensive scenario for Rome, and you just had to survive for a set time. But I thought we'd make the goal a bit more ambitious if this is an unofficial campaign mission. 
The goal is to restore the Roman Empire, and even in some cases extend its borders, starting by retaking Britain. There, you have to destroy Orange's town center and rebuild your own town center on or close to the flag to Romanize it again. Likewise, to the east, there are two town centers with flags in Germania, meaning you have to complete Augustus's original vision prior to the defeat in Teutoburg Forest. You also have to one-up Trajan and conquest further into Blue's territory into Sarmatia, and finally go at least as far as Trajan's conquest into Mesopotamia and replace the Sassanids' major city of Tessaphon with your own town center. If all five of those new town centers are built and standing at the same time, and of course you destroy the settled Goss town center in your own territory, then you win. Now, you might be thinking those locations don't seem too far outside your existing borders. And maybe you're wondering about all the empty space out there. Well, that's our next topic, which is the Huns, who have had a radical change in how they work. They're not a regular old civilization with farming and mining, that just doesn't feel like their style. Instead, after 20 minutes in-game, they start to have resources attributed to them from outside the map, and can begin to build up. The resources they get are about the equivalent income of a 75 villager economy, but makes them unrateable and frees up more population space. Especially on higher difficulty levels, just when it feels like you have things under control with the Goths, and maybe even making progress in the east, the Huns come in and take things to the next level. Now, if you're looking for an even greater challenge than the mission on extreme difficulty, I've added three extra modifiers you can make to this scenario. On the far left of the map, you'll notice there are a few outposts, and destroying the one beside the Long Swordsman enables the Imperial Age for the three Goth players and Anglo-Saxons, which makes them that much more dangerous in the late game. Without doing that, usually as the Romans, you have a technological advantage, as I had to give them Imperial Age if for no other reason than to unlock Legionaries at the barracks. Though you're also 2 versus 6, so I thought you could maybe use an edge. Now, in addition to that, you also have Bleda and Attila, with some outposts beside them. Destroying the outposts beside Bleda gives you some Tarkins, starts the Hun's resource trickle earlier, and increases their max population. So you can do that one from the start for a greater challenge, especially if you're playing co-op with a human player. Deleting the outpost besides Attila gives an even stronger version of this, and you can delete both at the start for a truly impossible fight, or just delete them anytime to increase the difficulty once you have the Goths handled and want a true test of your defenses. Of course, at any point as well, I've also given you the option to make this a truly single player scenario by assassinating the Eastern Roman Emperor. If you do this, you get control of the entire empire and your population cap jumps from 200 to 300 to accommodate the extra villagers and territory to defend. The idea behind only 100 instead of 200 more pop space is that there should be a bit of an incentive to let the east run things. And remember you also lose the potential of trade with them if you do this. Of course, on the other hand, combining your forces right from the start will often let you make quick work of at least one opponent early, and hopefully gives a different enough experience that it adds some variety and replayability. Personally, I find this scenario slightly easier if I take over for both at the start and ride a massive economy, but I also know the map really well, and if you're just starting out, I think it would be a lot to manage, which is kind of the point that the empire was too big to run efficiently by one central authority. A last, final mechanic I want to highlight is something you can totally ignore, but works as a bit of a panic button. If you find you're being overwhelmed, once throughout the game you can send a thousand gold to an invading faction, besides Cyan and this will instantly remove all of that faction's units from your territory. This might sound contrived, but is a reference to how the Romans actually paid the Goths to leave Italy in 408, among many other examples of paying off invaders. Of course, the Visigoths returned in 410 and sacked Rome, so just like in history, everybody gets one, and is a good reason to keep a float of gold for a moment you feel things might be slipping out of control, and which players you can still bribe is tracked under the objectives. Alternately, you can just ignore this mechanic, and the scenario works just fine like that. These things are here to add flavor and not make you play in any specific way. So that's the map at a glance, and while it's not an official scenario, I'm hoping it still scratches that itch, especially if you bought the DLC and are excited to play the Romans in a non-standard game. I'm very happy to receive feedback and will make balance changes as needed, but I've tried to include built-in ways to already adjust the difficulty yourself. Once you have it downloaded from the mod workshop, you just go into single player or host an unranked lobby, change the game mode to scenario, and pick it from the list of scenarios you have. I should note I haven't tried swapping player numbers, so do that at your own peril, and hopefully the triggers don't get too confused if you decide to try that. It also hasn't been made with more than two players in mind, so no promises it'll be anywhere close to balanced or fun for all players in that setting if you try to add more people. 
Try it out yourself though against the AI or co-op with a friend, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.